Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website. Bam. And on this week's roundtable, we have all the usual stuff. I'm just going to quickly go through it, because you know everybody. If you don't, listen to an old podcast. But we got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. We got Dude Buddy, Night Cap OG, Scott Bossman. We got the technician, Eric Peterson. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. You know him. You love him. The brand, the professor, sky.net, landmoto.com. And learn anything about anything, InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, is that the fastest intro we've ever done on the, on the roundtable? I think that is the absolute fastest, yes. Do, do you remember, uh, like, there was a guy who did a commercial really fast? This is my revenge for everybody that starts the podcast on 2x speed. <laughs> 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 yeah. Revenge is mine. Hey, what what if what if we just like launched into the material so then they're like okay fast forward and then they're like oh wait what happened i gotta go back yeah we're, we're changing it all up don't get too comfortable listeners they're coming so this week's topic is from last week we talked about wholesaling and some of the issues with wholesaling and but mike zana wasn't even there and he's like our resident wholesaler. So we're gonna do a part two on wholesaling, the do's and don'ts of wholesaling. So Mike Zeno. Yes, sir. We might as well start with you. And we should probably just end with you. <laughs> but I don't know what you guys said Is, last week. I don't know what you said. No, no, no. We, we didn't even get into it. We really didn't even get into oh, it. Okay. Um, what are some of the do's and don'ts of wholesaling? Do's and don'ts. Okay. Well, first off, I would say that uh, don't try to sell wholesale retail. I think that happens quite a bit. I think people um, try to bump their prices up, which is understandable. They want to make a profit. But listen, I don't always double my money on wholesale, um, but I do make money on wholesale. And, you know, especially when I do multiple properties, like when I, if I buy like 20 or 30 or more, I've bought in, uh, up, you know, we all have like 50, 100 properties at once. And then you negotiate a really good price. But, but still, if you have that many properties, I don't, if I'm, if it's one transaction and I'm making, you know, four or $500 per property and let's say I got 10 of them, that's five grand quick, you know, I don't have to double my money. So I think that, um, my first rule would be that don't try to gouge people because if you're going to wholesale, you're going to want to probably continue to wholesale and your customer base is going to get real small. Um, I do enjoy, I mean, does it sting? No. I hear that we go into the boot camps and people are like, yeah, I made, the, I think it was Kevin Sue. I made the best, <laughs> like, well, his yield or his uh, ROI was insane. And that was a wholesale that I bought from Mike. So it doesn't bother me though. It really doesn't because I know he'll come back and buy more, right? And I made money on that deal too, right? Maybe I could have made some more. That's okay. I'll know that next time, Kevin. But you know, uh, I think that's the first uh, rule I'd say, Mark. Don't gouge people. Don't gouge people. Scott Bossman, the nightcap OG. Do you want to riff on that as well? What What are some wholesale do's and don'ts you you see in the marketplace? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think to to expand upon what Mike said, you have to be fair, you know, you know uh, in our community, right? If if you want to be a long, I mean, this is not, not a threat, obviously, but to be a long-standing good member of this community, right? You want to be fair. You want to Sounds come like across as fair. You want to make sure there's enough meat on the bone for everybody. I, I would say also when you're when you uh, come to the table with some wholesale property, you do need to give good information. I think uh, the more information you give, the quicker you're going to sell it. I think uh, if you have a due diligence report, I think that's great. Uh, I think if you have some pictures, I think that's great. I don't think you need uh, actual pictures of the property, maybe some aerial screenshots, that type of thing. But if you come to the table with a little bit of information like that, uh, I think that's going to really uh, be an appropriate thing uh, when you're selling. And then um, I touched on this a little bit last week, but I think uh, it's kosher to not uh, – uh, charge a doc fee on wholesale deals in our community. Um, I mean, really, what does the doc fee do? It re recoups some of our costs, right? Our marketing costs, uh, that type of thing, our mailing costs. But um, really, uh, you can you can take a property and sell it wholesale the next day in our group. 
And there's not a lot of work uh, that, that took place there. So uh, I don't think the, the, the need for recouping costs is there on wholesale deals. Uh, therefore, I think the back fee uh, would be something I would, I would definitely stay away from when I'm trying to sell to somebody else. Gary Peterson, what would, what would you say if somebody tried to charge you a dock fee on a wholesale deal? Um, I think I'd tell them that uh, I'm not buying that property if they're going to charge me a dock fee. Have you ever charged a dock fee in a wholesale deal? Absolutely You're on, not. You're on mute. Well, my way, my, oh, you were asking yeah. me, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Have you no, ever charged I, I, anybody, anybody no a dock fee? fee? But sometimes I've advised people that, you know, they haven't dealt with another investor before. They could say, listen, I'm going to, you know, get a, a geek pay down payment link for $100. It's not a dock fee. It's going to come off the total price, but it, it's a good faith payment to sort of have the deed and all that created. So um, it's not a dock fee, but it could serve in, as in a similar fashion because we want we don't want to create documents wholesale or retail without some money in our hands because we all know people ghost us. And uh, so not a dock fee mark but in similar um sort of strategy i guess but it comes off a total price great so Eric peterson when you're when you're dealing with a, a wholesaler you know just to riff on what scott and mike said what what else if anything would you also be looking for well i'm going to give an example today i had a a recent wholesale transaction which um I will probably not go back to that person to purchase wholesale again because of the way the transaction was done. Um, there are a couple things to note about what happened in that transaction. Um, typically, um, it would be my expectation that when I'm buying wholesale from another investor and unless otherwise noted, I'm going to get the properties on a warranty deed. Um, I think that's kind of what we kind of teach in the community. That's the expectation that's out there. Um, in this particular case, the uh, seller sold me the properties on a special warranty deed without ever telling me. Um, so that was problem one. Uh, the second problem was they didn't record the deed. They gave me the deed and expected me to record it. I just, I've never dealt with a wholesaler that worked like that. I would never do that. Um, but that's the way this person worked. Now, admittedly, they were not um, probably the most experienced land investor and maybe not a member of our community. But nonetheless, um, you know, I'm not going to work with somebody that treats me as a wholesale buyer like that. I think that it's reasonable to expect when you're buying wholesale from a wholesaler, the number one, uh, if it's not a warranty deed, they're going to tell you about it beforehand. And number two, they're going to record the document for you and complete the documents for you. Um, this is this particular transaction ha happened to be in a state where there was a state specific form um, and they didn't complete that form. I had to do that too. So it was just all this extra stuff um, the deal was good enough. I was, I was just going to move forward with it anyways, but I won't be going back because of all those things that came up. You know, I had that happen to me once because just like you said, I'm not going back. Um, it's just, yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Um, Tate, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. I mean, I don't think I've, I've had people who asked me to record a deed on behalf of the transaction because maybe they didn't have access to simply file or something like that. And I said, yeah, no problem. I'll take it out of the, the, the amount that, you know, I typically would have paid you for the property. And, and that's totally fine. But to have somebody kind of leave you waiting and hanging around, I mean, that's just, it's just not cool. And I think the important thing to remember about working with wholesale is you're working with a colleague, right? Like you're working with somebody who you hope to work with many more times in the future. I've done deals with everybody on this call. And the one thing that I like about working with Mike is if he sends me a list, because he and I have developed a relationship, if I say, I'll take them, he doesn't really need to worry about it because I told him, hey, they're mine, I'm buying them, right? And, you know, that's because we've developed a, a rapport and a relationship. And 
if I was working with somebody I didn't know, I say, you know, hey, secure the property. I need to know that you're serious because paperwork and all of that goes into my team. But with Mike, no, he doesn't make me do that because he knows the check's going to come. Right. Um, And I think that's just good etiquette. Uh, You know, things that I look for when doing wholesale deals. I mean, I ask everybody, hey, is there anything fishy with these properties? Right. Are they going to come on a special warranty? I, I don't ask that specifically, but I would expect that to be, you know, told to me up front. The other thing I want to know is, hey, any liens back taxes owed? No. OK, fine. And it comes down to who you work with. If you trust the person you work with, like, we're all human. We've all missed things. Um, but the good thing is, if you work with somebody who you trust and they come to you and say, look, there's a mistake. This property's not uh, what we thought it was. They're going to tell you, here's your money back or let me fix it. No problem. I bought a property recently and the property was recorded into our name. And it turns out that uh, the death certificate from the previous buyer didn't get recorded in the right sequence. And so we own it with a dead guy. Well, I called the previous guy who sold us the property and they said, my bad, I'll take care of it. And uh, they emailed me and said, look, we got it resolved. You're good to go. And that's why you work wholesale, right? You want to work with somebody who says, my bad, mea culpa, Let me take care of this. No hard feelings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That sounds very Zeno-esque, but I could be wrong. It could be another wholesaler. Uh, No, Mike's Mike's good. His his properties are right. But, I mean, I've bought properties from lots of people, and it's like, oh, we made a mistake on the legal description. We made a mistake on the APN, whatever. As long as they fix it, it doesn't negatively you know, impact my relationship with them by any means. Yeah, you know, you, you know, what we should talk about Tate. What's that? I mean, is is how great we are to work with as wholesale buyers. Like we're kind of like these are the do, do's and don'ts of wholesale. what makes a good buyer. You know what makes a good buyer? Somebody who's got money right now. <laughs> right now, we're ready to go. Right now, we know exactly. We know exactly the questions to ask, and we can close right away. There's no waiting. You know, well, I mean, you know that, that money's good. Time, you know, money loves speed, right? And if you can call somebody up and say, "Hey, Mike, I know you want five hundred a lot, but I'm going to give you four fifty, and the checks in the mail tonight," he's going to say, "Do you have the right address?" Right. That's the only way he's going to respond to that question because I'm buying all of it, right? And he knows that if I I say I want it, then the money's coming. So, yeah, you want to work with people who aren't going to beat you up too much, and it's a it's a painless transaction. Yeah, yeah. So Scott Todd, what's on all of this? You know, the uh, I I was going to ask, like, why why is the person selling the property wholesale? Why do they have to record the deed, right? Like, man, you're getting it a good deal. And obviously, I think Eric kind of talked on that, right? Like, it's just the normal standard. Typically, whoever sells the property is the one who records the deed. That's just the way that it is. One thing I would think that would also just word of caution, like if you're going to buy land wholesale, this is something that like I see this happen all the time is you get in such a hurry because you want to buy the land. You're like someone sends out like, I don't know, a list. Zeno sends out a list and you're like, you know what? I want it all. And Mike's like, well, okay, no problem, because, you know, he has no reason to doubt you. And then all of a sudden you start going, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute what exactly can I do on this property? Like you did no due diligence in advance. You don't know anything about the area. You just saw something and you're like, I want it. And then you want to go and ask a million questions. Well, look, I get it. Okay. Like I understand that, but you know what? There are people that like work in these areas who know them. Like you say, Hey, this is, this is the property. And they're like, Oh yeah, I sell this all the time. Great. Now I'm not saying that you're wrong for, for jumping in and buying it, but, before you do that, you might want to research and do a little bit of advanced due diligence, some county research. You want to know what you're doing. Don't just jump on a wholesale deal because because you think it's not going to come. Land offers and deals, they come all the time. They're like the bus. So, you know, use, use some time. Understand what you're getting yourself into before you jump in and make a payment. And then you want to say, well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is wrong because it look, 
the way that the credit card companies work and the way this stuff, time is money. And if, if I have to issue you a refund, well, I'm not happy about issuing a refund. Not because, not because I lost out on the money because I'll resell the land. You know what drives me crazy about the refunds? Is that now they keep the merchant fee. So whenever I have to give someone a refund, I'm like out 20 bucks or 30 bucks. You do that a couple of times and man, that's a, that's a meal. Well, okay. It's a few meals, depending on where you eat. It's a few donuts. A few, do, few donuts. A dollar six a day, man. That's a lot of donuts. Yeah, but Scott, I think what you're bringing up is a great point because as a, as a buyer, um, I remember back in the day, I was, I was that buyer that would feel a tremendous amount of pressure to take down the entire deal because I didn't want Eric Peterson swooping in. Right. So I didn't do enough due diligence. I felt a lot of pressure. I'm nervous writing the check. And sure enough, after I own it, I start finding all the flaws. Oh, and so the only reason I, I had to buy it so fast in, in such an undisciplined way was out of fear. And you never make a good decision ever in life, whether it's land or anything in an emotional state. When you, if you feel rushed, that's, that should be a red flag. Hey, prob I'm, I'm probably not the buyer for this. And if your wholesaler is and saying, you've got 24 hours to make this, so many other people interested in it, and you don't want to take those 24 hours and you feel pressure, just say, pass, I'm not the person for this. Come back to me when I have a, a little bit more time to do proper due diligence. And I think that's a don't in the wholesaling world world is don't be the person that pressures the buyers. Even if you have a whole queue of people ready to buy, they're not going anywhere. Give people the proper time to do proper due diligence so they want to work with you again. What do you think, Zeno? Yes, I, I think that's really important uh, uh, and a good point because and that's just not for wholesale market. There's times where you might have a retail buyer giving you that sort of pressure. And the, the more, the sooner you embrace the fact that there's no shortage of land out there, that there's not the word infinite isn't probably applicable, but there's, there's so many deals. You're not going to feel pressured by one, no matter how sweet it sounds. There's, there's always another one that, you know, um, I like to say, you know, that, you know, someone started uh, five years ago, you know, someone's talked to me about, I guess it's sort of a related subject to about an area that's really busy by a lot of investors. I said, well, listen, someone who started five years ago is there has made a million dollars. Someone who's going to start in five years is going to make a million dollars there. It's never, the opportunity is never going to go away. So don't feel pressured by these deals. Uh, so pass a mark on a deal because of feeling a pressure on time constraint. Yeah, absolutely. Don't, there's no shortage out there. Well, uh, uh, yeah. So any last final words of wisdom, Mike Zeno, as a wholesaler on the do's and don'ts? I, I, I will. I think that, Mark, I think that sometimes people will move towards wholesale because it, they're having some difficulty with their marketing. And rather than dig deep into their marketing, they, they find the quick out, which is the wholesale. Now, I needed the wholesale because uh, I was in debt and so on and so forth. Um, I have a business, a separate, it's not my particular LLC, I have one with a friend, we do wholesale, it's just easier for us to do cash deals, but um, I wouldn't just gravitate, I, I talk to a lot of people because they know I did wholesale and they want to do wholesale, and my advice is, you know, uh, go for the terms, don't, don't just wholesale because you feel like you're having a hard time marketing, because, uh, you know, that, that takes, a, it's a skill to develop, just like buying the property was a skill you developed, so I would say, don't go there too quick, be quickly because you feel like you're not getting traction on retail. Dig your heels in. Uh, the retail sales will come. So I think that's important. I, I think that's actually a whole other roundtable discussion is what is your heuristic when to wholesale a property as right. opposed to when to retail it? So thank you, Mike Zeno. We've got a, a whole new topic for next week. And it's on transcript. Fantastic. And it's on the transcript, <laughs> which, you know, but now we're, we're going to ask you, Mike, for your tip of the week, a Ooh. website, a resource, a book. Before you do so, I've got to give some love to our sponsor, 
which is flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start going up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times. And by the way, that tuition investment you're going to make in flight school, get back 180 days or less guaranteed. Just do what Scott tells you and let us see your work. And you're all good. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training to learn more. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. All right. Scott so, Tyler, you look like you're about to bail out Mike here with the tip of the week, but... No, he looks like he's about to make fun of me. I, I was just going to ask him to turn his screen black like he used to back in the day because there's always pressure with Scott. There it is. Thank you, Scott. There it is. I don't think he was going to bail me out. I think that he just anticipates a quote. He's ready to just dive into it. But it's not a quote today, Mark. It's not a quote. In fact, it's a two-part tip. It's got two parts to it. <laughs> he's back. Oh, I, feel, I gotta look down. I can't even look at him. All right, All right, so Mike, the first I, I one... I will go away for you. I'll go away. Don't worry. Don't worry. No, no, there you go. Okay. I'm out. He's just, now, he's just, <laughs> now he's just showing off this new feature. I don't know how he does that. He just fades out. What is that? That's... Fade to black. Fade to black. I don't know how he does Fade that. Fade to black. Always got the coolest gadgets. So the, you, you know I love Ray Dalio. Um, I love his book, Principles. So part one of my uh, of the tip of the week is um, you got to get the app on your phone. I may have mentioned it before, but everybody who has never heard of it, it's a free app. You can go in. There's even coaching. Like, I'm looking at it right now. I could say, um, how do I know if my plan is a good one? You click on it, and it, you know, starts race principle. Remember that a good plan should resemble a movie script. It shows you where in the book it is. It shows you uh, all It shows you re all relative quotes, and it's it's really super helpful. Um, that guy is a master at, uh, you know, execution, I think. You know, I, I don't know too much about his world of investing, but his – Principles for success are, I believe, universal, and we could all use those. So that's that's part is, one. Is it principles in action? Yes, it is. Let me see. Pull it principles up. in action. Okay. Yep. I'm it, downloading it now. Oh, it's free. It's awesome. I just think that guy gives back a lot, and I love it. So, the second one, this is the one where. <laughs> Ray Dalio. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess for those of you watching, Ray Dalio just joined us on Scott Todd's screen. Um, so the, the next tip is a little off the wall. That's why I gave a solid one first, but it's not, if you think about what I'm about to say. So I've been doing a lot lately with processes, uh, because of process moto and just trying to restructure my business, just, you know, go through it with a fine tooth and, and, uh, comb and just make it better and, and make it more, work, uh, uh, more efficiently. But sometimes, you know, you can get to this overload. And I think this happens in our land business and all businesses where your brain's working so fast. Maybe you got multiple tabs open. You just start to really, you know, go into that melt. Remember the slide you used to show? You showed a boot camp, the guy in the corner with his head down, and it's just like, oh, man, I'm defeated. And it's just, it's a it's a feeling that we've all felt, right? Um, you can describe it a multitude of ways, but I've, <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> so I've, I've found some comfort. And, you know, a lot of successful investors do play cards. I'm talking about cards. And I'm not... I like to do something like solitaire, something that just takes my mind off and I start playing and I let, I just forget about what's going on. I take forcibly take a break because I really believe that sometimes to grow fast, you have to move slow. Like you just have to slow down and you start to just, you take, it's like when you were trying to remember someone's name and you're like, ah, come on, what's that guy's name? And you're like, uh, and then all of a sudden it pops in your head. I think that we know a lot of these answers to our problems, but we have to create a space for them to come up, to bubble up. So second tip is, if you're feeling stressed out and, you know, slow down, take a break, take a deep breath, go do something else. It could be meditate, could be play on the guitar like Eric Peterson, or you could uh, just play a game of solitaire, old fashioned. And you will then reinvigorate yourself and you'll probably come up with a solution to, or a piece of the solution to your problem. You can come Scott back. Scott Bossman, how, how, how do you, how do you de-stress? What kind of activities do you do to, to to slow down to speed up? I, I like it, Zeno. Uh, I uh, I do I do a few things. I will go <clears throat> exercise and leave my phone behind. I will go read a book and leave my phone behind. And I like doing projects, so I'll, I'll leave my phone behind and go work on. Like we just did a basement, just did our basement over, and you know it's it's cool to it clears my mind. And that's what I do. Kate, what about you? 
Yeah, I mean, reading a book or uh, riding my bike, that's kind of what I tend to do. But it's also helpful to play with the kids, you know, go outside and run around and dig in the dirt. That's what we've been doing recently is my kids are in the age of digging. So nice digging a lot of stuff. Um, but just getting outside and like getting out of my own head, right? Uh, some of the best ideas I've ever had have happened to me while I was riding my riding my bike, right? Think about different situations. And it's not like I go out there and I say, I'm going to go ride. And while I'm riding, I'm, I'm going to think about work. No, that's not the way it typically works, you know? And, and that's kind of that shower metaphor. When you're in the shower, the best ideas come to you because you're not thinking about work. You're thinking, oh, this feels great. You know, like a normal human being is in there with a warm shower, unlike you, Mark, who's still taking cold showers, which is so weird. But the rest of us are in there getting warm. It's a comfort. And hey, the good ideas come. You probably don't get those ideas because you're freezing to death. You're shivering. <laughs> I, you know, I feel us, I've, tra yeah, I've trained. Slow. I've trained my. No, I've trained my no, body you now haven't. No, to be in, you in that theta state. I don't know it's if you can have possible. a cold shower in Arizona. Is this such no. a thing? Cold shower in Arizona. What's the theta okay. state. What, theta state. I think you made. What, what, what was it? What, I, I, what was the memo? Let's gang up on Mark on this podcast. I didn't see well, that. It's just that cold What's showers transition are dumb. That, that, that's that's what I was getting at. Okay, I'll show you the science on why the cold shower is so effective. Don't forget to show me morning. the science on why a warm shower is such a luxury. It, you know what? There's something to be said about getting out of your comfort zone. And that every morning you get reminded of it. It's a superpower. I can go anywhere in the world. I don't, you know, they don't, have, they don't have hot water. I'll be fine. You know who's going to be crying? You, Tate Litchfield. You. Could ruin your whole vacation. Not me. You in the I won't have to switch hotels. Says, I'll be just fine. You're going to die. You get the text while you're in the cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now that we croak. All right, T Eric Peterson, what do you do? To uh... I think, uh, you know, oftentimes like changing your environment. So if you have a room in your house or somewhere that's your office, getting out of that office, being somewhere else is, is the first step. Um, for me, I, I like to go for a drive or run errands or something like that. Um, to me, like, I don't know, I just enjoy that. And it's time away from everything else. So that's, that's one thing I do of many. No guitar? No. They, they, <laughs> Guitar is uh, hasn't been played in, in quite some time. One day it'll come back, but I think we got to get the kids out of school first. They they keep us busy. All right, Scott Todd, I imagine you're living a stress free existence. But if you weren't, <laughs> what, what what kinds of activities would you do? I'd go fly the plane. Wait, or for Mike Zeno, I'd go fly the plane. <laughs> That's just very <laughs> trippy. I almost just had like a seizure. How do you do that? <laughs> Why, my <I>? man? <laughs> That's like watching like the beat, like one of those seventies shows. I don't know, like the monkeys or something. When they when they stop playing music and they do that, <laughs> how you did that? For those of you listening, go watch the video of this on uh, on YouTube. It's it's worth it. It's worth it. Just just for the special Todd. So. So Scott, when you're flying, then you're not, you're relaxing. I'd be stressed out. Um, you know, the thing is, is that, okay. So I guess if you don't know how to fly a plane, it'd be stressful. Right. But if you know how to fly a plane, uh, like there's, there is, there is a level of peace up there. Your phone's not ringing. There's like, no one can reach you. Okay, the air traffic controllers could reach you if you were on the frequency with them. And, uh, you know, essentially, it's, it's literally peace and quiet up there. And, you know, you go, up, you go up high enough, it's smooth, you get smooth air, and it's just, um, there's, uh, what it does is, yes, you got to concentrate. It's not like you're just going up there and aimlessly wandering around the sky. You got to think about it. But then what happens is you start to think about other, other things. You stop thinking about what you're dealing with and you start to think about something else. 
And um, I'll tell you what, back in back in December, I was uh, trying to solve some problem. I'm sitting there at a computer trying to solve this problem, trying to solve it, trying to solve it. Couldn't do it. And my wife's like, hey, you know, let's go. Let's go uh, fly these dogs from Miami to Tampa. And I'm like, OK, let's go. So we get up in the air. We go. And while I'm flying across Florida, it just hit me like, why haven't you done this? And I'm like, oh, man, why haven't I done that? So I land and get home. And sure enough, the answer came to me while I was up in the air. And I find that happens quite often as you 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 get out of your element. Stop thinking about it. Think about something else. And then the answer will come to you. I like all the answers. I, I think I have the best answer, though, which is the power of sleep. You've got a problem you want to solve. Write it down maybe six o'clock at night. Let it go and then let your unconscious mind over a good night of sleep. Not a Scott Bossman, Mike Zano nightcap night of sleep. No alcohol before bed. No, no nightcap. Alcohol free. Don't drink caffeine after, say, you know, 12 in the afternoon and get a good night's sleep. And you'll see in the morning how much more relaxed, how much more focused. And that, that the answer to that problem will probably come to you. So there you go. I shouldn't even share that after all the, the hazing I took this, this round table podcast. It's like my own tip of the week. But that's okay. That's okay. I'll be sending some ice cubes later today to prepare them for a, a cold bath. Since you don't want to take a cold shower. What do you think, Tate? No, thanks, man. I'm good. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and just remind you the only way that we're going to get Scott Todd to do these incredible visual effects is if you do this three little fat, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, 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 let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. Wow, I haven't been ganged up on like on that on something like that since eighth grade. I don't think it was intentional. It was just yeah, incidental. it just it just started to snowball. <laughs> you know, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Good podcast. Good podcast, for sure. The, uh, but now 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 we got to write down for next week. The hero, so for next week, it'll be the heuristic of when should you wholesale, when should you retail? Um, right? When to wholesale? You know, people that are still listening to this podcast are like, is this really what happens when the podcast ends? Like, <laughs> they just start talking about the next podcast. It is. It is. So a little behind the scenes baseball. Normally we like banter, but we're starting to banter now before we even let the let freedom ring. Yeah. So I we know just, we're, we're mixing we're it up. Mixing. I think we you warned everybody. It. You warned them. Be on your toes. We're mixing it up. Yeah, we're mixing it up. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.